Good day. Today we're going to learn how to take an SMS storage group and divide it up into multiple mini storage groups or mini what we will call mini SRM sub pools. So to begin with, we need to determine what storage group we're going to carve up and then the volumes within that storage group that we're going to use. So um, I've already set a couple of things up. So we're going to go look at uh, a, a, our space pool report. And we've got this product storage group. All right, and there's 10 volumes in this storage group. And you'll see uh, DAP 0, EA, B 0, and then 1 through 7. And you'll notice that 5, 6, and 7 are twice. All right, and the others are single. This is the reason because these three volumes right here are part of a sub pool. All right, and I could pull this out, but just to it's just to illustrate that there's a sub pool involved in this, and there's two definitions for this for these particular three volumes. All right, so now let's go. You'll notice, I mean, it did say uh, 10 volumes, even though if I select the 10, there's actually 13. That's because there's really 10 volumes for that storage group. All right. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our administrative members that are active and we're going to set up our sub pool. So the sub pool or in our sub pool definitions member, which is the SMSPOL00, we'll edit this guy. And I've already defined a group of volumes. So this we give it a pool name. I'm on, you can call it anything you want. I called it sub prod for a, a short for sub pool, sub prod for product, sub prod. And I've included those vol sears. You could use a unit address, um, but it's generally uh, advantageous to use a vol sear from within the storage group. So I picked those three, DAP 005, 6, and 7. All right. And they are in that sub pool. Now, to use that sub pool, we need to um, define what's going to go to those volumes. All right, so they're part of the storage group. So any data sets that are eligible for that storage group will still are still eligible for that sub pool. But we can segregate the type of data that goes to the storage group. So we limit only certain pieces of information to those three volumes. So we'll go into our functions. So this is our function list and the SMS select function controls SMS DAS allocations. So it's a function that controls all SMS managed data sets in terms of how those data sets would be allocated to volumes within a storage group. So if we edit our filter, so these are the the, the resources that are eligible for this particular function and up front I've set that for the storage group, anything prod, job RD, GMIS. So, you know, those things are going to be active in there. And any any data sets that are already GMIS can go to the, any DM, DM volumes. That's just for uh, the, the resources eligible. But if I go look at the rule, the rule actually determines what will go to that sub pool. So I set an SMS pool value of sub prod so my sub prod definition and the vol select parameter uh, specifies that volume that data sets will be allocated to volumes based on a uh, percent free for the volume so the volume that's got the most the, the the highest percentage of space available um, uh, from a percentage standpoint uh, would go there um, I can also use max space um, or I could use a best fit. But for the sub prod, I'm going to use a percent, right? And I'm going to limit only the data sets that are going to that storage group. So those 10 volumes, only data sets that have a primary space of greater than of less than 10 cylinders and a secondary space of less than uh, 2490K are eligible for that particular sub pool, right? So only small data sets can go to those three volumes because I don't want those small data sets going to the other seven volumes in the storage group because those seven volumes will be 
handled by much larger data sets. Right? So this is how we would define subpools, and it's basically to set set a storage group up so that you can segregate data within a storage group based on size, maybe it's type of data. Uh, you may want only uh, partition data sets to go to these volumes versus uh, any other volume within the storage group where you want, only want physical sequential versus vSAM. Uh, if you had like a DB2 uh, uh, storage group where you've got a mixture of uh, DB2 tables and maybe some sequential or some other uh, non-DB2 vSAM. So an excellent way to take a storage group, break it down into smaller sub pools so that you can segregate the data and then manage that data based on management classes for the storage group. Um, and that way you become, you more efficiently use that particular storage group. So I hope this was useful. Thank you. Have a great day.